Hey everybody, it's Delta Shiny Zeta here, so I know what most of you are thinking. Hey, so Shiny quit the world of magic for the 18th time in his YouTube career. Well, okay, maybe not 18, but seriously, all jokes aside, there's a good reason why. And this video actually is going to be dedicated to really talking about the reasons as to why that happens very commonly throughout my channel and more so it gets specifically into the world of magic and just something that i noticed about the game in general things that i noticed over the last few years but i didn't really address them and it's a little shocking and scary but there's a reality to this game about something extremely unforgiving and something just how it changes your life yeah i hate to say that an iphone game changes your life but oh my god let me actually talk about that so, as many of you know, I uploaded my first ever video of the World of Magic on February 7th, 2014. Now, before that, I had played the World of Magic since about March of 2013, so I had roughly about one year of experience with this game before I did YouTube videos on it. Now, back when I first played this game in 2013, I thought this game was great. I really loved it. I loved the cute, like, graphics, I loved the artwork, and I genuinely loved the soundtrack, despite the only issue really being that it really had huge server issues and lag back then. But beyond everything, just most of all, I love that there was actually an MMORPG for the iPhone in the year of 2013, and even before that a little bit, because the game came out a little bit before that as well. Because back in those years, it was definitely a really unique aspect, you know, to just have a very well-built MMO for the iPhone. So I just thought it was really unique, and that really stood out. By the time I started my YouTube channel in December of 2013, I soon decided that I would start a series of this game very soon because I loved it. And I eventually did, on February, as I just mentioned. So I played for about a year and a half starting in February of 2014, with about no issues, which means that by the end of 2015 or so, you know, I was very consistent. But eventually, at one point, the upload started slowing down. And many of you noticed. So I went from uploading two of the World of Magic videos in one day, to once daily, to eventually once every other day, to eventually only on weekends, to eventually only bi-weekly, which means like once every two weeks, and then eventually just random uploads every few months or so just whenever I felt like it. There were many times when I did, quote, come back, and I did do a new miniseries. For example, I did the No Black Trader Run. I did the new start back in 2017. I did the Reinkrad series, and now I did the Ranger Guide. But eventually, I quote, quit all of these. Except the Ranger Guide is technically in the hiatus, but I'll get to that in a little bit. But the point is that yes, I eventually quit all these series. Now this sparks the very interesting question. Why did I quit all these series? Was I just busy with life? Was I bored with this game? Was I scammed of all of my accounts? Stick around and find out. One day, when I was training and leveling up on some Dark Beholders, I eventually asked myself a rather interesting question. Why is it that this level 22 Dark Beholder is the exact same enemy as a level 4 Angry Leaf Boar? Now the question isn't to be taken literally, as I know the Dark Beholder and Angry Leaf Boar look different and have different drops, I get that. It's more so asking about why is it that come to us program these two enemies the same exact way in terms of gameplay mechanics despite them being 16 levels of a difference. Like seriously, I'm doing the same exact shit right now compared to back when I was level 3 noob killing boars. The strategy is simple, gradually keep your distance and spam your same ranger skills until it dies. Rinse and repeat on every single enemy. Literally the only difference now is that it takes more monsters to kill in order to level up. That's it. That's literally it. So this is why this question really sparks some curiosity about the reality of this game and how come to us is actually a mastermind in actuality. The whole objective of the world of magic is quite simple. It's to level up and to get better equipment and skills in order to succeed against others in PvP one day, right? Now I know what you're gonna say, but that's how all MMOs are. That's true. It is. But the major difference between those games and the world of Magic is how the developers aim to help players make the ultimate objective come true. Let's break it down. If the goal is to be one of the best players in an MMORPG such as World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV, or many others, then there's numerous ways on how to do it such as training on enemies normally, doing quests, dungeon queuing, 
and really just being strategic in general as to what is the best possible action to take and where to go depending on what level you currently are. In the world of magic, if the goal is to be level 50 one day, or at least to level 40s, they have one and only one way to achieve it, kill millions of monsters. There are zero quests that are consistent throughout the game that are directly correlated to you getting experience aside from the ancient coin quest in the beach, but that has its own problems which is related to the main point of this video and I'll get to that in just a little bit. But there's realistically no diverse or creative way to gain levels. For all you new players watching, the thing that you're doing right now at level 1 is literally the same thing you will be doing at level 42, killing millions of stupid mindless monsters. And that is it. Thinking about all that is a little scary, but very, very sad. So here's a pretty accurate chart I found online that details all this and how long it actually takes to level up. It only shows the information for the levels of increments of 10, but I think that's about all the information that we need to reach a conclusion. So as you can see, each different column shows a different category. The one on the very left is level, that's basically self-explanatory, it indicates what level. The next column shows how much experience you need to reach the next level. For example, at level 20, you need 66,300 experience to reach level 21, and that gradually keeps increasing every single level by a little bit. The next column shows monster experience, roughly about how much experience you'll be getting from monsters that are generally 3 to 4 levels above you, which means you need to have the proper hit rate and stats to actually hit them. So yes, that's one thing I didn't really mention yet, but I guess I'll mention it now is uh, these numbers are all assuming you even have the proper equipment to consistently deal solid damage to enemies that are about 3 or 4 levels above you to kill them quickly enough. If you aren't there yet, then it'll actually take you even longer than this chart. But anyway, uh, going to the next uh, column, it indicates the number to kill. So approximately, you know, you need to kill 4 Kuis at level 1 to reach level 2. Approximately, you need to kill 166 monsters of about level you know, 12, 13, 14-ish, around there, to reach 11. Yeah, level 1's the only one where I didn't really put that you need to kill, like, let's say, boys level 1, because nobody does that. But aside from that, once you're 10 or higher, yeah, you need to start killing monsters that are 3 to 4 levels higher than you, if you want to level up faster. Anyway, the next column shows time to kill every single enemy, you know, per enemy, and it's averaging 10 seconds per. So assuming that you kill a Kui in 10 seconds, you know, you would of course, uh, you can basically do the math, you would need a total of 40 seconds to kill 4 Kuis to reach level 2, and so on. Now there are ways to speed up this process of course, getting better equipment, that does of course, you know, make you kill them faster. But in general, this chart is not indicating the 20% experience buffs that you can get, so just keep that in mind. That will actually speed up the process a little bit, not a whole lot, but a little bit definitely. Uh, so the final column, it shows in hours. It translates those seconds and hours. For example, to reach level 2 from level 1, it would take you about 0.011111 hours to reach level 2. Which translates to, again, 40 to 45 seconds or so. At level 10, it would take you about 45 minutes to reach level 11. At level 20, it'll take you about 3.12 hours to reach level 21. So going from that, as you can see, if you want to reach level 31 from level 30, you need to spend 18 and a half hours of gameplay to reach it. If you're level 40, it'll take you over 60 hours of training, killing the same stupid monsters over again. This means that going from level 40 to 50 will be at least 600 hours, but that's like a perfect best case scenario. It's more like 800 to 1000 hours in reality because of a, a lot of other things that just happen in general, whether it's PvPing in the hot sand plains or wherever you're training, eventually getting bored of the game and having to take a little bit of time off and just talking with people, chatting up, you get the point what I'm saying, which is why that's a much better estimate, at least 800 hours. However, that's not even taken into account all the time it takes from levels 1 through 40 or all the grinding for gold and equipment and scrolls and skill books and pets and all that shit, like what the f Let's say I play this game for about 5 hours a week, which is actually a pretty realistic amount because usually normal gamers play for maybe about an hour of Call of Duty a day when they get home from school or work, plus a few more in the weekend, so it can go to like 7 or 8 hours a week, but beyond that, and you basically have no life, like seriously. But anyway, 5 hours a week, this means that this is about 260 hours a year. So this means that it'll take me 4 years to go from level 40 to level 50. Not even counting every other element about the game, such as grinding equipment and shit. Like, what the hell? What? Now let's talk about grinding. 
Contrary to popular belief, grinding is by no means difficult at all. It's always funny how some pros in this game, or not just this game, but in other games in general, they always say to lower level players about having to work hard, you know, quote, work hard, unquote, to get what you want in this game. Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Pro, can you tell me what is so hard about walking to the beach as a level 35 player, gathering a shitload of woobas, and then spamming sweeping strikes, rage, berserk, and slam, and then spamming the pick up button all over the corpses, and then repeating that method like 5,000 times? What's so hard about that? Nothing. Nothing at all. That's what. It's nothing. No difficulty at all. Like, seriously. I mean, honestly, I hate to be the guy that's a major buzzkill, but it's not like this is an undiscovered secret of life that's completely mind-blowing and revolutionary. It's not. It's extremely simple. If you see a level 40 plus player with all these pro equips and multi-millions of gold, they either scammed a bunch of people, they either bought the account, or they put literally hundreds of hours into farming. It's that simple, but there's nothing difficult about that. Generally, people say that it takes about one hour to grind about 80,000 gold in the better grinding spots, which means usually the beach against Whoopas and a couple other places too. Now, this of course means for non-mage classes, because mages do actually take even longer than this, sadly. If you wanted to get like 20 million gold to buy most things by the time you're level 40, you will need roughly 250 hours of grinding to reach that. That's of course a best case scenario, so let's assume like 300 hours total to be completely neutral. This means that from your 300 hours of grinding, plus your near 1,000 hours from level 40 to 50, and then your additional hours that we didn't even count yet from 1 to 40, you would probably need to spend like maybe 1,800 hours of your life to this game. This means that if I play my consistent 5 hours a week, it will take me nearly 7 years to accomplish all of this. What the shit? All of this has led me to a number of conclusions about this game. For one, there is no skill in this game whatsoever. None at all. You will not get better at this game the more you play it. Really, the only thing that you will probably need to know about this game is how to combat specific classes in PvP environments. But really, if you hand a noob a level 40 account and teach them what skills to use in what order against each specific class during pro PvP battles, they'll be able to get it in like maybe two hours of practicing. And that's it. That's it for the learning curve in the gameplay. The reason why I bring this up goes back to when I was questioning this game while training, because I realized that there is no skill in this game, so it led me to ask myself, what the fuck am I doing? Seriously, even in other games that are hated by other people such as Call of Duty, Fortnite, or other RPGs, there's a learning curve that demands skillful gameplay, even if you think Call of Duty is cancer, which to an extent I agree. There's no denying that this gameplay demands skill in order to win and get positive kill ratios most of the time, or in RPGs when it comes down to knowing everything about the mechanic and battle system of it and how to succeed in order to come out on top. The world of magic is nothing like that at all. Now onto the final point that I want to make about this game, and this right here is perhaps the most important reason why I kept quitting, quote, quitting this game. I know the previous part of this video may have been comedic or silly at times, but this next part is 100% realistic and completely honest as to why I kept quitting. And yes, it's directly related to the amount of hours you need to put into this game. Back when I started this series on my channel in early 2014, I was very dedicated into making this a progressful series for all the viewers. But one thing I noticed was that the more time I spent into this game, the less of a social life I had. And this, again, it's connected to the things that I previously mentioned in terms of how much time of your life you need to dedicate to this game if you want to be successful. As many of you know, I'm a student at CSULB, which is Cal State Long Beach, and it's a university in Southern California. I first transferred to this university back in 2014, and one thing I eventually noticed was that there were many times back then when all I would do was go to class, go home, go to class, go home rinse and repeat every single damn day for every semester for my first year and a half there. And you know what I would do when I got home every day? That's right, play the world of magic. This was consistent until early 2016 when I made a decision to have more of a social life because I honestly felt like pure shit that my best friend was literally my iPhone. So I made a decision to get more involved in my school. I joined a club on campus to meet people. I spent more time studying with classmates to interact with them. I eventually got a job on campus as well, and I still work on campus, and as of now, I'm currently the graduate assistant of our university's orientation program, a job that I love dearly because I get to meet so many great people in person. 
But the point of all this is that I feel genuinely happy that I don't spend all of my extra time glued to an iPhone game. I used to feel lonely in this world when all I would do is live in my room, but now I feel socially connected to the world, and with all of this came less time to be dedicated to the world of magic. There's simply not enough time in my life to be going to school, work, having a social life, and being dedicated to my YouTube channel in general for Let's Play videos, which means other series while at the same time playing the world of magic and making general progress and developing my character. All I'm saying to all of you is this, if you want to have any chance of being successful in this game, to be called a pro one day, you will have to breathe the world of magic, unless you of course spend literally thousands and thousands of real life dollars to not spend that much time, but aside from that, you would have to do this. You would have to breathe the world of magic. And this is because of all the numbers and statistics that I showed you about the game, and the reality of how much dedication you have to commit to it. I know sometimes you may have that feeling that if you work extremely hard and dedicate your time to only training as opposed to just wasting time and chatting with other players, that you will make it to level 45 one day. And to an extent, yes, you're right, but you've seen the sacrifices. You will have to only go to class and go home right away. You will have to be in your room all day connected to your charger. You will have to skip meals to spend that extra time playing or take your iPhone with you to the bathroom. You will have to turn down friends that want to hang out with you. You will have to minimize your hours of social life. You get the point now, do you? Listen everyone, I completely get why the more popular videos on my channel are Summoner's War, Oceanhorn, Evil Creo, Micromon, Nexomon, and The World of Magic of course. Because they're more unique games that I did on LP style of. As I kept saying, to this day, I haven't seen any other YouTuber make a dedicated commentary series for the world of magic like what I did. And that's what makes me stand out and it makes this series very popular in my channel. But as much as I love to provide content that you all love to all of you viewers out there, I also now realize that I am not willing to throw away all my other aspects of my life for this iPhone MMORPG. I'm not saying that I won't ever upload any videos of this game ever again, but at least now you understand why I do this and seemingly quit sometimes or only upload videos of this game at random weeks or months. This is the reason why. Everything I mentioned in this video is the reason why. Honestly, I'm sorry I never really gave a straight answer to many of you who always ask why did I quit Tuam, you know, again, like I get random comments saying that, or why I took another hiatus or break, and I would always answer generally saying, oh I just got really busy with life, or oh the game kind of bored me. Which was true, it was not a lie, but there was a lot more beyond that. My only recommendation to all of you is this, if you can even remotely relate to some of the things that I said in this video, it's important to re-evaluate yourself. Now I'm not going to be the one to tell you what to do because I don't have that right, but it's nice to be aware of this at the very least. All I can say is that throughout the years I've gotten multiple comments from other players who used to play the world of magic but quit due to very similar reasons I mentioned in this video. So if you're a level 25 player who's been excessively training the past few weeks because you're aspiring to be a level 45 pro one day, just ask yourself, is it really worth it? Is it really that important?